Hi, my name is Harvey Raja. I'm a part of the Coherence Engineering team. Today, I'm going to speak to you about a new feature we've put into Coherence 371 called POF Annotation Support. POF, i.e. Portable Object Format, is the preferred serialization framework used by Coherence to serialize and deserialize objects, including application objects. Now, prior to 371, application objects had two options either to implement portable objects or implement a POF serializer. Both of these forms have been seen to be verbose and explicit, hence the introduction of POF annotation. So this is what we would have in a uh, pre-371 application. So here we have a person object. So that person implements portable objects. And you can see that there are two methods that are mandated as a part of that portable object interface, read external and write external. On the right hand side we have a POF serializer implementation. This requires the methods serialize and deserialize. With 371 we've introduced annotations. They allow you to decorate your classes with these annotations that drive the POF serialization. There are two annotations that have been added, portable and portable property. Portable is simply a marker annotation, hence has no members. Portable property allows specification of an index and or a codec. Now both of those are optional attributes. A codec provides the ability to customize the behavior when serializing or deserializing a property. We'll talk a little bit more about codec later on. So let's have a look at a Java object that's annotated with these new annotations. So here we have this person object once again, but this time it has the portable marker annotation at class level. We also have several portable property annotations within the person object. Firstly, we have it on an accessor. We have it on the get first name method. We also have it on last name and age member variables. So this class illustrates the fact that portable property can be used in on these several areas. So let's move on to the .NET example. .NET also supports annotations, but within C Sharp they are called attributes. So here we have a portable attribute, which again is only allowed at class level. We also have portable properties marked in several places. .NET has the concept of properties and auto properties. Hence, within the .NET implementation, we also support .NET properties. And to illustrate that, we have a property, an auto property called last name, and we annotate it with the portable property. We also illustrate the access annotation with get first name being annotated with portable property and on the member variable m underscore age. Let's have a look at the C++ implementation. Coherence provides a runtime type information library that is more comp comprehensive than the out of the box C++ type information library. It allows us to define certain properties that are within a class and as well as registering a class with something called a system class loader. At the bottom of this particular code snippet we can see that firstly we, we register the class but then we declare each of the properties. When we register the class we annotate the registered class with a portable annotation. We then go on to declare each of the properties and annotate those properties with the portable property annotation. To register application objects with a POF context can be done in two ways. For Java and Net.NET, we provide a configurable POF context implementation which as its input uses an XML file. That XML file has several user types and custom application objects 
will be defined in their own half config XML file. Hence, the person class would have to be registered within this XML file. But for it to use the pop annotation serializer, it simply needs to not implement portable object and have the app portable marker annotation on the object. In C++, we add a preprocessor macro called co-register pop annotated class. This will use the appropriate serializer and register it with the appropriate pop context. One feature we've added within the pop annotation support is something called auto indexing. Auto indexing is the ability to enable the pop annotation serializer to determine which indexes to use. Now this will be done using a predictable algorithm. And currently that is very simple in terms of it will use the property names while still respecting the reserved indexes that are explicitly defined in other places within that person object or that, that object. Currently, this feature does not work with evolvable classes. To enable auto indexing, this must be done at the pop annotation serializer level. Hence, must be done within the XML file for when used within the configurable pop context. And here we can see an example of a person that uses the pop annotation serializer explicitly and the last attribute put to the constructor is the boolean to indicate enablement of the auto index feature. Within C++, we have a preprocessor macro called co-register pop annotated class AI, which will enable auto indexing. Something we mentioned previously was codex. Let's drill into a bit more detail on what a codec is. A codec can be specified at portable property level, which means you can provide custom behavior and functionality that determines how this portable property is serialized and deserialized. If a custom codec is not specified, the default codec is assumed. The default codec uses write object and read object. Let's look at an example of where you would potentially want to use a codec. So in this example, we have a list implementation that we want to specify. So we have this m underscore aliases member variable, which is a list, but we do not know the concrete type. So the problem arises when we serialize and deserialize this list, we lose its runtime type. So to specify the concrete implementation of this list, we could provide a linked list codec, in which case we actually want to return a linked list implementation. And you can see within the linked list codec implementation, it very simply instantiates a new linked list, passing it to read collection, which will then populate that linked list and return it back as a result of this decode. And on the encode, the encode becomes very simple because we can deal with it just simply as a collection and don't need to cast it to the linked list. Okay, let's have a little demo of this new feature. So I have created a person object. Person has a first name, a last name, and an age. We have various accesses and our member variables. We also have a pop configuration file. In that pop configuration file, we have defined a user type, the class name, and no explicit serializer. If we look at person test, we have a serialized person test, which creates a new configurable pop context, creates a new person, serializes that person and then deserializes that person. And then we can check 
So the first name is equal, the last name is equal, and the age is equal to what we expect. So as our person object is not annotated, we are expecting an error to be thrown by this test. So let's run this test. We can see the serialized person test has failed. And if we look a little further, we can see an exception. So there we can see the actual root of the exception, which is the fact that it's missing a pop serializer configuration provides us the configuration file where it was specified, the type ID and the class, but unfortunately it does not specify a POF serializer. So let's go and add some annotations to this class. So the first annotation we need to add is the portable annotation. Next, let's just add first name as a portable property. And let's give it an index also. Second, let's do these on the member variable. So let's add a portable property with an index of one for age and a portable property with an index of two for age. And sorry, one for last name. Let's just save that, rerun this test and now we pass so just by simply adding these annotations we are now able to serialize and deserialize our person well thanks very much for listening and i hope you enjoy coherence 371